Good morning, makers, and welcome back for another edition of Saturday Morning Craft Along. I'm your host, Agnes, and today we're going to be getting a little bit messy with some tie dye. So, I have some examples here of our craft today, and this is one of my favorite things to do with old t shirts to turn them into yarn. So, t shirts that have stains, rips, or you've just outgrown are perfect for transforming into your very own custom dyed t-shirt yarn. So that's what we'll be showing you um, how to make what to make today. And as you can see, you can go wild with your colors. So you can go bright and beautiful. You can also use t-shirts as is. So if you have a colorful t-shirt, you don't even need to dye it. You could just cut it right up and use it um, as is. But I like to go that extra step um, to make them custom colors because they are one of a kind, unique, just so beautiful. You're really going to impress uh, the people that you show your craft off to. Maybe you're going to turn your um, yarn into uh, something that you'll give away as a gift. So it's kind of nice to take that extra step to make it um, really one of a kind and special. So we're going to show you all the steps you'll need to do um, to make this craft with us. Before we get started, of course, we want to uh, welcome everyone. Say hello in the chat and you'll be entered into the draw uh, at the end of today's show. But we also ask that you share photos uh, of your projects with us. So last week we worked on some plaster candle holders and we did a draw for all of the photo submissions we received. And we are very happy to announce that our winner this week is Sam. So Sam, thank you so much for sending in your photo of your dragon skill uh, candle holder. It's so, so beautiful. I want to congratulate you. Great job on it. So let's jump into our craft today. And we'll show you what we have going on. Here's my bin of lovely yarn. And the first step to tie dye is preparing your work surface. <laughs> so as I get my gloves on, we're going to say hello to everyone in the chat. Oh, good morning, Anna, Sophie. Thanks for coming back. You know, Sophie has never missed a show. So thanks, Sophie, for being our number one viewer. <laughs> you are awesome. And let's see. Yes, gloves are very, very important for tie dye. <laughs> so we want to get our fingers protected no matter what. Um, every time I tie dye, I always seem to get my fingers dirty, um, even though I am wearing gloves. So I want to make sure I'm for sure wearing them right off the bat before we get into the dye stuff. I have my tub of t-shirts that have been soaking overnight. So these are just old white t-shirts um, that I got from the thrift store. They're actually like surplus from some type of event that was happening and I was able to get like a whole box of them <laughs> so lots and lots of t-shirts available for me to dye and so what they're being soaked in is a mixture of water um, that has salt and um, soda ash that's been mixed in and dissolved so what these two chemicals do is they prepare the fabric for um, accepting the dye so it's just that one little extra step that's going to help um, get like make the color stay in the in the fabric so it keeps it in there it keeps it from washing out so all I'm doing right now is I'm kind of uh, twisting out wringing out all of the extra moisture because we want the shirt to be wet but not like dripping okay and you want this to soak for a minimum of 30 minutes I just did it overnight because it doesn't hurt to leave it in longer so you could leave it in for days uh, weeks even and it would be fine as long as it's covered up and there's not um, other stuff getting in so this is the tub that comes with your tie-dye kit um, it's a great size for a couple t-shirts um, of course you can also dye yarn and other things that are made out of cotton socks are a great um, thing to dye but for today's activity we're going to need t-shirts <laughs> so I've gone ahead and just ring ringed it out I'll leave the second one in there for now I've also prepared a tub. So because tie dye is so messy, traditionally it's done outside, especially with kids. Um, so we all get really excited and, and sometimes make a big mess. So it's always easier to do things outdoors. However, with the weather turning colder, I wanted to show you an option for doing this indoors. So you can tie dye all year round, not just a summer activity. And um, so to do that, you could either use a, a dish pan like this. So this is just a, a plastic tub um, you can get at the dollar store for a couple bucks. And or you can do this directly in your sink, which is actually like probably the best thing to do. 
Um, I don't have a sink right here in the studio, so I'm going to be doing it in my wash tub here. And, and yeah, so if you do it directly in your sink, that way you can just like rinse all of the extra dye right down. And it's kind of like no fuss, uh, no fuss. Yeah, <laughs> so there's my tip for you. Uh, bathtubs work great too, but uh, yeah, whatever you have available to you. Um, I also have some cups that come in your kit. So these are just for like mixing special colors. Uh, we may or may not use these today. But you definitely are going to need the dye bottles. So when you get your kit, they come pre-measured with the right amount of dye for the liquid that will fit in the bottle. And so I've got yellow, blue, and uh, magenta. So these are the three primary colors, and you'll be able to mix other colors with them, of course. Um, so we're going to get create some nice purples and some oranges and greens as well. So um, the last thing you also want to make sure you have, um, if you're kind of working not far from, if you're working far away from a sink, you want access to a little bit of water. So I just have this tub. This is like the container that comes in your kit. It's just a little bit of extra water for rinsing off your gloves because your gloves will get dirty and you're going to want to um, clean them out as you work. So I also have a rag. This is just like an old tea towel that I keep for tie dye specifically um, and other messy crafts too. I also uh, grabbed some elastic. So for my first t-shirt, I'm going to actually probably lay it out on the table just to get it arranged in the tie-dye um, order that I want. So I'm going to think about uh, my design a little bit before I apply the dye. And if you guys want to follow along exactly what I'm doing, that's awesome. You might get some very similar results. So what I've done is I've laid it out on my table that has a tablecloth on it and I've kind of got it sideways. So this is the neck here. <laughs> this is the neck and this is the bottom hem. And so it's kind of laid out sideways. And what I'm going to do with my t-shirt is I'm just going to start to kind of like do this like crunch fold. So I'm just kind of gathering it up. These like little pleats. Long ways. Okay. And I, I'll continue that throughout the rest of the shirt. <laughs> Krista loves a good mess. Yeah, don't we all? <laughs> okay, we got to be able to clean it up too, though. Okay, so I've kind of got it pleated like this. And then I'm just going to secure it with some elastics. Yeah, wherever they went, there they are. And for, I decided for this t-shirt, I'm going to do like rainbow. <laughs> So using elastics is not 100% necessary. It's just like I want to keep this shape. So it doesn't even have to be tight. It's just going to help when I go to move the t-shirt to have it not fall apart on me. You can definitely experiment with the designs. Uh, like you could do a spiral, which is quite traditional. Maybe on my next t-shirt, I'll do spiral. And uh, you can also play around with the amount of dye. So because this is a white t-shirt, you could opt to leave some of the areas undyed and that would make sure there's a little bit of white in your yarn, which could look really cool too. Okay, so that's kind of how I have it set up with the elastics. And um, now I'm gonna put it right into the bin because we're ready to apply the dye. Okay, so just kind of have it Putting in the tub. Now I'm ready to apply the dyes. Okay, here we go. Very exciting. I'm going to start with red or the magenta. So make sure you've mixed it up really well. It takes about a minute to get it fully dissolved. You're using like the hottest tap water that we can get. These bottles are really nice because they don't um, they don't leak very much. So they have this nice little cap that you can keep for later and they're totally reusable so once these are empty you can always source more dyes ask us where we get ours and we'll share with you our source um, and you can totally refill them okay so here we go we're just gonna start squirting on the dye directly onto the t-shirt and just go little by little um because you don't want it so much that it's like dripping out Okay, and you can actually go with your hand and now massage the dye right into the shirt. 
and get it to like get the color to spread and then you can go back and see if you want to add more like if you want it super super saturated or if you want to leave a little bit of white showing you can kind of up to you okay i'm gonna move on to see i'm already getting super messy <laughs> my next color which is yellow and i'm gonna leave a little bit of room in between so i'm gonna put a lot of yellow here and i'm gonna slowly add a little more red and what i want to happen in this area here is to make like an orange color so to do that we're just gonna kind of add a little bit of both and get it to mix by massaging it and if that's not working great, another option is to take one of those little cups and mix it directly in the cup. So you can get varying results with, depending on how you apply the dye, of course. Okay, so if you add more yellow, it'll be more orangey. And you can just mix that and pour it directly onto your t-shirt. Cool. Um, ooh, you've done tie dye but never yarn. I love tie dyeing yarn because it's again makes it one of a kind and very, very special. And you get really cool results. And you can do so much with yarn. You can knit, crochet, we love to weave with it, you can braid it, you could probably finger knit with it too. <laughs> Okay, so you can always go back and just add more dye wherever you feel like you need it. And so that's looking pretty good. I'm going to move on to creating like the green now. So for the green, I'm going to bust open my blue here. And we're going to put the blue right about here. Awesome. I think I'm going to mix up a custom cup for green as well. Always start with the lighter color and just add a couple drops of the darker color and then mix to see your results. And then just kind of just do it little drop by drop so you don't end up mixing too much and you can kind of control the color better that way. So I'm going to pour that right on. Pretty good. And then you can do the massaging bit, and that'll help spread the color. If your hands are getting like uh, all sorts of colors, it's a good opportunity to dip it in your water bucket. Because once you start to get all three colors going, you're at risk of creating like a muddy brown. So that's when you want to be careful with like what's on your gloves. Not sure how many of you are crafting live with us today, but I hope you'll be watching and maybe making some time to do this later in the day. Especially if you're going to be doing it at your kitchen sink or your bathroom sink. A little more green. There we go. Come on this side. Yarn is going to look super cool. So the yarn, the t-shirt the that we're dyeing today, this is going to be our prize. So for anyone who's uh, watching, you might be able to win this t-shirt. <laughs> of course, we need to let the dye set over like 24 hours, 48 hours. So one or two days, we let this, we let it um, absorb and set. You want to keep it wrapped in a, in a warm place. Um, so it won't be, we won't be able to cut this up today, but I will show you my results. <laughs> I have some pre-dyed t-shirts that we're going to be cutting up today. Okay, so after blue comes purple, of course. So I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to add the red down here. And grab one more mixing cup to try to make a purple, purple color. So red and blue together. We'll make purple. So that's the t-shirt I'm wearing today. We made at um, 
summer camp when we did a space theme. So we did kind of like galaxy colors, which was like a lot, a lot of fun. We ended up using bleach to get like the stars, <laughs> which is like a whole nother thing. So green, blue, purple. Cool. Purple's always a tricky color to make. This is going to look super cool. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm just going to squirt it right on. Dodge it in. good so this section of the shirt is actually like the top half and we're not going to use it as much for the t-shirt yarn but you can still use it for other crafts so i want to make sure i tie dye the whole thing so now that we're back to purple i think we could transition into back to magenta and maybe end it off with a little more orangey colors Can't wait to see how yours turns out, Sophie. <laughs> okay, so back to red. Now I gotta switch over to yellow. I'm just going straight, straight into it. And then maybe I'll end it off with a little bit of blue. Try to get a little more green in there. This is so fun. Ooh, shoelaces. Yeah, shoelaces are a great idea. Those would die up really, really fast. Hmm, you're giving me ideas. <laughs> I might have to find uh, some shoelaces that are not black because I think all of mine are black on the shoes I currently own. Ooh, what a fun idea. Okay. Actually, I wonder if this t-shirt yarn, we could turn it into shoelaces. Hmm. Now you got my brain turning, Sophie. <laughs> so I am getting a little bit of like mixed colors in here because of all the little drops, but it's looking pretty cool. You just got to be open to uh, going with the flow here. <laughs> Sometimes you can't control the tie-dye uh, as much as you would like. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. So the next thing you want to do with your tie dye, your dyes on the side, uh, I'm going to just dip my hands in the water to get the gloves clean. Dry them off on my rag. And then you want to put it, um, you want to wrap it in plastic um, and that's just to stop it from drying out. So I have these like large zip top bags. And I like to put them directly in the bag, but I don't want the t-shirt to touch because I don't want the colors to mix. So I'm just going to very carefully lift it up, get it in my bag, and keep it separate. So when it's in the bag, make sure the sides aren't touching each other, okay? And just seal it up. And you're just going to leave it like that for overnight or minimum is like four hours but i think the longer you leave it like the more it'll have a chance to set and that's gonna go off somewhere else in a safe spot that no one will touch i've got another little tub here that i'll keep off to the side okay now this tub is dirty so if you did want to reuse it um uh, just take it to your sink and wash it out and then you'll be ready to start again um, i have of course my tv swap out so I'm going to do my second t-shirt. 
in a new tub. And I'm going to try something called an ombre effect, which is where um, it goes from, it's one color, but it goes from light to dark. So I think that'll make some really cool looking yarn. And for this, we're not really going to, um, we're not going to do any special pleating or anything. We're just going to like lay the t-shirt down in the tub. So squeeze out all the extra moisture. <laughs> Let's see what's going on in the chat. Julian did socks. Ooh, scrunchies, headbands. These are all great ideas. Yep, hair accessories. <laughs> okay, you guys definitely have to send me photos of what you make. I ended up actually doing some samples last night of um with the t-shirt yarn, and I did make a hair accessory. So you guys are right on the ball. And um I might share it with you um at the end of the show. I don't know if I brought it into the studio, it might still be upstairs. But definitely we're going to do another show in a few weeks time of what we're going to make with our t-shirt yarn. So today is all about how to create it. And then we'll do a, a separate stream all about crafting with the yarn. Okay. All right. So my gloves were not 100% clean. So I have a little bit of red. Okay. <laughs> I'll live. Um, okay. So now with the ombre, I think what I'll do is. Just kind of get it arranged. Obviously, the uh, t-shirt's bigger than the tub. So again, the hem is down on this side. And maybe I'll just kind of scrunch it up until it fits. So the head of my t-shirt is on the left. And the hem is on the bottom. Okay, what are we going to do? What color? Hmm. I'm really tempted to do all the colors again. But I did say we'll do ombre effect. So probably better to do that with the blue or the red. And in fact, maybe we could mix up a custom purple. That might be quite nice. I think this was my purple cup. Yeah. So we're going to mix up some blue. And some magenta. And... You can actually dilute this with water as well, which we'll be doing um, to create like a, a lighter shade. So this is like a full strength blue and purple or blue and red to make purple. I'm just going to pour it right across the bottom. Ooh, and it made like a nice dark violet shade. I'm just going to start to massage that in and, and mix up some more. Every time I mix this, it actually is not going to be the exact same shade, but that might still look kind of cool. Because I'm mixing two colors, it's hard to like control how much of each color is going in. Um, okay, how about this time I'm going to scoop up a little bit of my salt water and I'm just going to add it to the dye. So this is going to make the dye just a little bit lighter in color. And I'm going to pour it across here. It doesn't look that much lighter. So you could always experiment with how much water is going in the dye. You can always pour more on top. I'm doing this for the first time. So you're doing I'm doing a live with you guys. <laughs> I have the theory. Okay. And more dye. The so t-shirts take quite a bit of dye because they have a lot of fabric. <laughs> I'm so excited for you, Sophie. Are you going to do your yarn today? Yay. Okay. There's a little more dye. That one had more red in it, so I'm going to put a little more blue. Okay. Really start to massage it in. And you can open it up to see what's happening as well. So when I want to make sure the dye has been like um, super, it's getting right into all the bits, I, I really go hard with the massaging. So I want to make sure it's fully saturated. This is looking quite lovely. Um, yeah, it's going to end up being a little bit lighter than what you're seeing now because it's uh, because it's wet. When it's wet, it's always a bit darker. It will lighten up. 
once it dries. I think mixing it in the cup is a good option for getting that custom color. Sometimes when you um, apply it directly to the garment, um, it will start to like absorb the color right away. So if you did want to mix a purple, it's best to do it in the cup. You're going to water it down a little bit. Turning out to be similar to the shirt I'm wearing now. I'll hold this up once I'm done dyeing so you guys can see how it turned out. So the goal here is to try to get it to go from dark to light. It's kind of difficult, uh, as you can see. I think I'm just, uh, I just need to keep adding more water, keep lightening the dye. Make it less strong. Concentration. If you're not happy with the shade that, of like the color that you're making, you can always mix up a little more and pour it on top as well. As long as you haven't gone too dark right off the bat. But you know what? It's just playtime. Just have fun with it. See what happens. Cool. So I am getting a little bit of a change in color. So it's looking kind of neat. Um, and if you want, you could go back to dark on the end too. So it could go from dark to light to dark. I might leave a little bit of white in this one. And I'm just going to massage the rest. Makes a fun sound. Cool. So here's how it's looking. Pretty cool. I'm a fan of that. There's a little section here that's lighter, but I actually don't mind it. It does look like a galaxy. Cool. Okay, so this definitely needs to go again in a bag. I left the top more white around the sleeves and the top lighter colors okay so yeah I'm gonna grab another bag and put this off to the side <laughs> and if you you don't always have to start with a white shirt so you can actually um dye any color shirt as long as as long as it's not black because obviously that's not going to show up so you could experiment with like if you have gray shirts or even like yellow or any color um try dyeing on top of that and see what happens whenever i do my dyeing i like to um make sure i have a lot of t-shirts like available so that i can always use up all of my dye so it doesn't end up getting wasted um the dyes actually stay active um they're the most they, sorry the dyes will be the most strong within the first four hours of mixing up the the water. Um, so just kind of plan for that. Um, if you do if you do have leftover dyes and you still want to use them, you can use them up within the week. Just keep them in the fridge with the cap on, and keep yeah. So if you keep them in the cold, they'll stay fresh a little bit longer, but they won't be like as vibrant as if you had used them within the first four hours. Okay. So a little later today, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna use up the rest of my dye with some other t-shirts that I have. But we're going to move on to actually cutting up the t-shirts. So I'm going to do a quick little cleanup of our studio table here. Get things swapped out for t-shirt cutting. Okay, and I didn't do too badly with the mess. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, one sec. Do, do, do. 
gloves come off. <laughs> we don't need our gloves anymore, but we do need um, some tools. So for cutting, you, we have some options. I'm gonna show you three ways to cut your t-shirts and the fastest, I'm gonna start with the fastest way. So if you have a cutting mat like this and a rotary cutter, this is gonna be the fastest way to cut your t-shirt. You can also use fabric scissors, which we're gonna need. So the sharpest pair of scissors you own, if you have the scissors from our kit and you've been only using them on fabric, they should be sharp enough to do this. Um, and we're going to need something to draw some lines with. So I have a marker and a piece of chalk. So also going to need a t-shirt, of course. So I have my tie-dye t-shirts here that I have. I actually did these probably about a month ago now, and they've just been waiting for us to, to craft with. So I'm going to start with my orange t-shirt. You can see these are, um, these are t-shirts that have other designs on them. So I'm totally reusing old shirts, uh, thrift store shirts, or shirts that just don't fit anymore, or they are damaged. So this is how it turned out. How pretty is that? It's like on fire, right? I love this, this color. But when I did this t-shirt, I, yeah, I was just applying the um, magenta and the yellow right to the shirt, and I kind of massaged it, and that's how I got this cool, fiery splotchy look <laughs> okay. so now to cut our t-shirt we need to have it laying sideways on our table and we're gonna um, make sure you get the like the bottom all lined up the goal here is to get everything smoothed out just take your hands and you want to feel through the layers for any lumps and bumps any creases you want to kind of push them out get everything nice and flat Okay, so here's option number one. You're going to fold your t-shirt almost in half, okay? We're going to leave about one to two inches of the t-shirt, like this side, poking up. So I hope you guys can see that clearly. I think you can with the colors. And get your hems all lined up as straight as you can okay and then just go ahead and again and feel for any creases because the flatter it is the better this will turn out so for t-shirt yarn we're actually only going to be using the bottom like two-thirds of the t-shirt so that is the area underneath the armpit um, up to the bottom so this is going to create a continuous loop of yarn um, that's all one piece so <clears throat> There's a few ways to do this um, and I'm going to show you the fastest way, which is might not be the way you end up doing it. But um, for people watching that have these tools um, and you want to do a lot of it, this is actually the best way to do it. We're still going to need a ruler, though. I have this one, which I really like because it's got a handle. <clears throat> I picked it up at Princess Auto. <laughs> um, you could also use a quilting ruler. Um, so if you sew, you have one of these. It's great. Um, but if all you have is like this ruler from the kit, that works as well. I have made a couple guides. Okay, so I have my, my um, cardboard guides here. So we're going to be using these in a little bit, but I just wanted to show you the measurement that I'm going to be using. So my favorite measurement for cutting the strips of t-shirt yarn is one and a half inches. And that just makes like a really good size yarn. You can go bigger and smaller. Um, I wouldn't recommend going any larger than two inches and probably one inch is the thinnest you wanna go. But again, you can experiment. If you really, really want thin yarn, you could try half inch or three quarter inch and you can get like different, the, the yarn will end up being different thicknesses. So that's what that measurement represents. Um, but I like to use my cutting mat to also count out the, the measurements. So. That's what makes it a lot faster is if you were to use your ruler and your your cutting wheel. So the way this works is it's a metal disc that is like a essentially it's just a blade all, all around the edge. And when I push, it's gonna turn and it's gonna cut it. It's like a pizza cutter, but really sharp. So it's meant for fabric. Um, okay, so here we go. You wanna cut off the hem 
So anything that has stitching is not going to work well. So that's why we want to get rid of the end right off the bat. So this hem, we're gonna actually just going to discard. But if you can come up with a use for it, it is just like a loop of uh, material now. I haven't come up with a good use for them yet. So let me know if you figure something out. Okay, now we are ready. We've got a nice fresh cut and we're ready to move down the line. And we're going to be just cutting um, lines into our t-shirt, okay? And like I said, I want to use that one and a half inch measurement. And we're going to be cutting from the side closest to me just up until the fold, like just past the first layer of t-shirt, okay? So as I work, you'll be able to see what I mean. And uh, because I have it lined up on my mat here, I can use the measurements on my mat to make sure I'm doing it the size I want. So I've got one and a half inches. I'm going to line up my ruler with the grid. And then I'm going to go with my wheel. And I'm going to stop as soon as I get past that first, uh, the first layer there. Okay. So you don't want to cut it all the way. You want to stop and leave a gap. Okay, and then you just move your ruler down to the next measurement, another one and a half inches over, and you just repeat. Okay, being careful to check your work and make sure it's cut all the way through. So didn't quite make it on this section. So I like to just kind of pull it away, make sure it cut all the way through. And I keep going. This does take a lot of hand strength. Um, so really, it's best for adults to be doing it. This method. Sometimes um, I also make it look easier <laughs> than it is. But I'm pushing quite hard when I do this. Make sure it's cut. I'm just going to keep going until I get up to the armpit. You could also fix things with scissors. Go. Okay, so it looks like I can probably squeeze one more cut just underneath the armpit. It's not quite one and a half inches, but that's okay. It's close enough. And I'm going to cut right to the edge. So it completely separates it. So what you're left with is the top, like one third of your t-shirt. And you could definitely save this for future craft projects. T-shirts are nice for sewing with. Um, and you can make like clothes for your toys. <laughs> Lots of things. We're going to come up with ways to use the, the rest of the t-shirt. But not today. We're just going to focus on the yarn. So what you're left with now is this kind of fringy thing with um, the top section that we did not cut into. <laughs> this is where the, ma the, the magic happens. This is kind of the secret to making it one continuous piece is you're going to kind of open it up and you're going to put your arm underneath that section that's not cut. So get your whole arm in there. <laughs> if you have a big t-shirt, you need a big arm. And we're going to start using our scissors for this. So you can kind of see where all the cuts are. I'm going to start over on the right side, take my fabric scissors. And from the edge, you could see where your cut lines are. You're just going to um, go from about the middle. And we're going to start cutting on an angle. So I'm going to go from about the middle right up to 
the first cut. Okay. So it makes it's, it is on an angle. So now that's kind of fallen away. And now you just go to the next cut from the bottom. So we're always going from the bottom to the top. And now we're going to go yeah, on an angle. From this slit, cut in a diagonal line to the next slit. Okay, so it should look like that. And that's going to fall away. And then you're just going to keep going. And this is what makes it continuous. One piece. There you go. I'm very excited for this yarn. It's going to be beautiful. Okay, so this process also creates a lot of dust. So just like the little tiny fibers that get released from the t-shirt when you cut it. Um, so if you are sensitive to like dust, make sure you're um, working in an area that has some ventilation um, and that you're sweeping up right away because it can get kind of irritating, especially if you're doing a lot of it. Um, Okay, so I've got to the end, and when I did my last cut, again, it wasn't on an angle, so I just kind of tapered it off. So your end will look kind of like a little triangle taper. So the next thing you want to do to turn it into, um, from these fat ribbons into skinny yarn, and this is, the, this is the most fun part. After all that hard work of cutting, you finally get to do the fun bit where you get to stretch it. So you're just going to hold your arms apart, and you're going to stretch stretch. That's good exercise. <laughs> okay, and what happens, I'll show you again, close up, is the shirt curls in on itself. So it's just the way that the jersey knit um, likes to behave when it's stretched. So it likes to curl in on itself when you stretch it. And this stretching feels really cool. Going from a wide ribbon to this skinny pasta thing. So you can kind of, you're going to see it starting to collect here. Okay, so you kind of get into a rhythm. <laughs> you can go fast. And I'm just kind of keep moving my hands and working down the line. <laughs> Sophie's going to come out with a whole uh, line of accessories, I think with her t-shirt yarn. <laughs> this is the magic part. Yeah. Look at that. And look at the colors. You can definitely start to see them. The variations in the, the tie dye there. So beautiful. So keep stretching. Until you have your pile of pasta. So if you have a t-shirt that has a side seam, you might notice as you're stretching that some areas where it has the stitching won't stretch nicely. It, it might end up looking a little different um, and that's okay. It's just, you gotta use what you have. But if you have the option to pick shirts that don't have any stitching up the side, those are the best ones to use um, because they create like a more consistent yarn. And they're less likely to break when you stretch them as well. There we go. So, and the bigger the shirt, obviously, the more yarn you're going to get out of it. So, if you are going out and uh, looking through your drawers, always go for the biggest shirts. <laughs> okay, I finally got to the end. Whew, that was a lot of work. I'm really happy with it. There's a lot of dust in the air. And I have my. My, uh, my, sh my yarn that's ready. So I don't want to leave it in a pile like this. I do want to wind it up. And so to do that, I like to wind it around something like this fat marker or 
any kind of tube will work has to be kind of strong so like if you have like a tall thin bottle um, I find this marker works really well so what I'll do is I'll take a little bit of tape and tape the end of the yarn the end of my my tube and I'm going to now start wrapping it around the marker I'm going to start doing like these little crisscrosses and rotate the marker because you want to get it wrapped up into a ball what we're going for keep turning it and wrapping it different directions and this is the easiest way to, to make a ball get it all tidied and ready for crafting on a later date and you can start to see all the colors i love i love this step my favorite thing to do with t-shirt yarn is to weave with it so i've been making pot holders so or kitchen trivets so whenever you have like a hot pot um like from your stove and you want to put it on your table you want to protect your table from the heat so i made some looms and we've used these at camp in the past to make um pot holders so i i because of the thickness of the yarn and uh just the way that the yarn works way that it, it the like the bulkiness of it and the thickness of it just like lends itself really well to making pot holders and to weaving um yeah so that's my favorite thing to make with them and i'll show you guys the samples of those um on our show when we show you what we're going to make with this so i've got to the end of wrapping and all i did with the end i'll show you again <laughs> the end of the ball of yarn you can just kind of wrap it around a couple times and then you want to tuck the tail into like underneath a couple times just to stop it from unraveling okay so you can go back to that section that you've taped and you want to hang on to it as you pull the marker out and now we've created a ball of yarn with a center pull so center pull um is like the best way to use a ball of yarn because you can pull it and the yarn will come out and you notice that the ball is not rolling around the table so that is also my pro tip <laughs> is to always use your yarn from the center pull if you were to like use the ball from the, the tail that's on the outside your ball would roll all around the table when you're using it for crafting okay so that's how you make a center pull ball of yarn um and now i want to show you guys the option for si using scissors so if you don't have my fancy cutting uh, rotary cutter this is totally doable i've definitely i've done this with kids so it's totally kid friendly activity i'm going to show you how you can do it just with scissors okay so you're going to take another t-shirt and i'm we're going to show you an option now with using the t-shirt not folded in half because i find if you don't have a lot of hand strength you can it's really difficult so you don't have to cut through it um, like doubled up like we did in the first example you can cut it just kind of opened up all the way and this is going to be um, easiest on your hands okay we still want to cut off the hem though so we're just going to go to the bottom and go with our scissors and cut the hem right off because we don't want that stitching stitching stops the fabric from stretching Mm -hmm. okay I missed a little bit of it so I'll just go back and trim that off so the scissors are definitely slower um just so you guys know it will take you longer but that's okay I'm gonna get done in the end all the same okay, so we lay the t-shirt out same way sideways with the hem I always like to have it on the right because I'm right-handed if you're left-handed you could always have the hem on the other side on the left on the left side so for this it might be handy also to have your cardboard guide 
and a marker or a piece of chalk. So I'm going to see what turns out better on the screen here. I'm going to take my, I've just took, uh, took a knife with a rule and a ruler and I measured one and a half inches and I made this special guide gate. It's like a gauge, I guess. You want to line it up with the edge of your t-shirt and then take your chalk and run it down the edge or a marker. But the chalk is nice because it kind of washes away. Like it kind of, yeah, you can see that. The marker might bleed through and you might end up seeing the marker. So remember, we're not going all the way to the top. You can actually, if you want, use your guide and then just draw like a keep out zone. So just remember, only cut up to that line. And we're just going up to the armpit, right? And then you can take your chalk or your guide again, and then just can draw all your lines first. There we go. Do all your measuring before you start with your cutting. Ah! <laughs> if you're going to be trying different sizes of the thickness of the yarn, so like let's say you wanted to try and make a really skinny one, but you're not sure how it's going to turn out, test it out on uh, like the sleeve. So in an area of the t-shirt that's uh, not really that important, you can always do your, um, yeah, your testing on other scraps. You really, and if you're going to go skinny, you want to do the stretch test, right? To make sure it's not going to break. I haven't made anything uh, skinnier than one inch so far. Ooh. Okay, so that's my last line. Yeah, that looks good. So then you can just go with your scissors right from the bottom and then just start cutting right on the line. I'm just using like the first inch or two of the scissor. I'm not using like the full width of the blade. You want to keep your t-shirt flat on the table while you cut. So that's why having um, scissors with like a flat edge, like fabric scissors are really good for this. So this is definitely the method I recommend for beginners. And then once you're really, really good, you could try faster ways of making your yarn. So this t-shirt that I'm cutting up right now, I've had since elementary school. <laughs> so it's been with me a long time. A friend gave it to me and I don't know, it was just kind of sentimental. So I just hung on to it. I never really wore it. But uh, I decided it was finally time to turn it into something new <laughs> instead of just taking up space in my drawer. So if your hands get tired, take a break. You don't want to work to the point where your hands are getting so sore because then that's kind of like a lasting effect and uh, it will it will affect everything else you do in the day. So be kind to your hands and give them a break. You can always come back to this. You use your hands for everything. So you don't want to you want to treat them well. Um. Oh, that is a super idea, Anna, turning your old tie-dye t-shirts. You've already done the hard work of tie-dyeing them. 
you could turn them into yarn absolutely if they if it doesn't fit why not that's pretty cool <laughs> Okay, I'm at the last line, so I'm just going to cut right off the edge now. Cool. I did catch a little bit of the underneath the armpit, so I'll just trim that right off. So we are getting, uh, we're almost at the end of our show today. So if Carissa, you want to do the draw while I do my last bit of cutting, show you guys this step again. Okay, so get your arm right in there. And look to see where the cuts are. So mine are there and there, my first two. You're going to eyeball about the middle from the edge. And we're going to go on a diagonal from the middle up to that cut. Okay, you can draw it out if you're not sure, but eyeballing is fine. So that drops away. And now we're going to continue from the next slit up to the next slit and just kind of cut in a straight line. So I've got my, my hand kind of opened up all the way to, to keep it stretched out. See what I'm doing here. You could probably do this on the table too, holding it in your hand, not working for you, as long as you don't get the order mixed up. So here, always cut from the bottom to the top. Yeah, working. Here we go. Oh, our viewer winner today is Anna. Wow, congrats, Anna. That's awesome. So you get to uh, pick one of our t-shirt yarns that we made. So you can choose um, one of the ones I've already made, or you can wait and get like the ones that I just tie-dyed. So let me know <laughs> what color you want, and we'll get that over to you. Woohoo! So if you make a mistake and you end up cutting it uh, like and it's not a continuous piece, that's okay. Just save those pieces because you'll still be able to use them later on. Okay, almost the end. So close. One more cut. So again, here I am at the end. Just want to show you what it looks like. This is where that armpit section was that I just cut out. So I'm going from the last slit on a diagonal. And that's the ending piece. Woohoo! <laughs> awesome. Now you get to do the fun part where you stretch it out. So satisfying. I love this part. Like I said, it's good exercise. You can stretch your back out. And I love this color too. There you go, make a pile of noodles. So this part is the same that we showed you before. Just stretch, stretch, stretch. And then you can grind it into a ball for later use. Awesome. <laughs> All right, guys. So I just want to thank everyone again for tuning in. I hope this was educational. I hope the process was clear. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. And of course, please, please, please tag us with your photos if you're sharing on social media. Um, or if you just want to send us an email, we have a web uh, a page on our website. In the description, <laughs> the link is in the description. 
so you can just submit through a website as well so once again thanks for crafting along with us and tune in next week where we'll be working on a brand new craft project have a great weekend everybody